Easter greeting. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And let's sit or kneel to pray. And first of all, we're reminded of God's high standards for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. So then aware that we're not perfect. Let's say sorry to God. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And when we say sorry to God, he's pleased to wipe the slate clean and to forgive us. So may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And now, um, forgiven, we're going to sing the Gloria, which hopefully Mike's going to lead, because I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. on the answer pray. We just have a moment to bring our own prayers, our own thoughts, maybe a thank you prayer to God. And then a special prayer for today. Risen Christ, Faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, 
Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So now uh, we're going to have our two readings. Thank you, Graham. The first reading is taken from Acts 4 and starts verses, it goes from verses 5 to 12, and that can be paid, found on page 1095 of the Pew Bibles. So that's Acts 4 from 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas. John, Alexander, and others of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them, and they began to question them. By what power or why what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked, How was he healed? Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1, starting at verse 18, and it may be found on page 1128 of the Pew Bibles. So that's Romans 1 starting at 18. God's wrath against sinful humanity. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities... His, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. For though they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you both. Uh, so now we're going to sing again. It's uh, number 660, The Lord's My Shepherd. Let's stand to sing.
our gospel reading is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, and beginning to read at verse 13. You'll find it on page 969. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it under its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do please be seated. So let's just pray. Dear Father, we want to thank you uh, for all your good gifts to us. And we pray now that you would transform us by the renewing of our minds. And Lord, that you would move our hearts so that we would love others as you already love them. In Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, I'd like to say, I think, congratulations to you. uh, Because you have given £711,000, which is absolutely remarkable. And um, I think you should give yourself another clap. Let's have a big round of applause. You can't make too much noise. Thank you very, very much. And I know that you want to look round. Um, There's some debate whether we should do the annual meeting first or the look round first. I think we're going to do the annual meeting first. And then you can look round after the annual meeting. That way you'll stay to the annual meeting and it'll be quick. So that's good. We're going to look. And so because it's the annual meeting today, uh, we need, I, need, I meant to give an annual meeting address, but we're going to do that in the sermon. So please turn with me uh, to Matthew's Gospel and to chapter 5. And we're going to look at salt and light and how that applies to us. But I want to start with a more general uh, introduction. And that is, I want to say to us, let's make new disciples. The Christian life, I believe the Christian life is like a staircase with five steps in it. And the first step is to come to worship. So you've all taken the first step by virtue of the fact that you're here. That is the first step, to love the Lord our God with our heart and mind and soul and strength. The second step is to love one another within the church. And you'll do that when you stay for tea and coffee. If you stay for tea and coffee, the reason we stay is so that we get to have a conversation with each other. Uh, We often call it fellowship. That's the second step in the journey of faith. And the third step in the journey of the faith is to become like Christ. This may take a long time. It's not something that's going to be quick. But the primary way in which we become like Christ is by joining a home group. Jesus himself had a home group, didn't he? He had 12 people in a group who travelled with him. And the idea was that they were going to become like Christ. He actually says to them that he's going to teach them to be rabbis. And then when he left, that's exactly what they did. They were rabbis, and they went from place to place doing as Jesus done, healing the sick and speaking the good news. So those three steps are all about loving God and becoming Christ-like. And I'm not going to talk about those today. I'm going to talk about the last two today, which are in this passage. And the last two are loving our neighbours in word and deed. The last two is serving our neighbours, ministry, and mission, which is speaking about the things of God. And that's what we're going to be thinking about today. The first thing, the point is, to let's make new disciples. And to make new disciples, what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount is, let's be the salt of the earth. So verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, How could it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. It must have been a pretty remarkable thing that Jesus was saying this to a crowd of ordinary, everyday people. At the time of Jesus, the reason they had salt was to stop things going rotten. So when they bought meat, they would put salt on it 
to stop it going rotten. And Jesus is saying to ordinary people like you and me, he's saying it's your job to stop the rot in society. It's not Rish's job, it's your job to stop the rot in society. That's what we're here for. So how are we going to stop the rot in society? The primary way is by loving our neighbours in action, by what we do. And actually the truth is we're already doing loads of these things. So on a Thursday there's a coffee corner, and coffee corner is about making sure no one's lonely. From the Methodist church there's a food bank, and we support it here, and the reason we support it is because the food bank is about making sure nobody's hungry. And there are other things going on as well. Christians Against Poverty. Christians Against Poverty is trying to make sure that everyone has enough money to save, enough money to give, and enough money to spend. These are ways in which we're stopping the rot in society. That's what the churches are doing. But there are also lots of things that you are doing in society, this sort of in the secular society, led by Christians. Does that make sense? So many of you are in a group called suspenders. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say that in a sermon. <laughs> but the reason that group happens is because you enable it to happen. The people of the church enable it uh, to happen. Or another example would be the U3A. You know, the U3A is basically run by the Dakins. And that's so that older people can get together and have fun together, learn together, and that's a good thing. And there are lots of other examples. The Scouts. There are leaders in the Scouts from within our congregation. There are people running... There, there are governors at the nursery school and at the junior school and at the, and at the primary school and at John O'Gaunt from our electoral roll. We are the salt of the earth. We're stopping the rot in society. And the purpose of building this hall at the back is so that those groups can come into the building to meet. We want to stop the rot in society. The purpose of building the room at the back is so that you can start new activities to stop the rot in society. St. Lawrence himself ran a lunch for the widows and orphans. I would love it if we could have a St. Lawrence's lunches again. That's, that's kind of what, what St. Lawrence did. But it's only, it's only going to happen when there are people within the congregation who have the capacity to do those things. We, let's be the salt of the earth. And then the second thing is, let's be the light of the world. Jesus said this, you are the light of the world. I know he also said he is the light of the world, but he said to you, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We need to talk about the things of God. We need to talk about what God is doing among us. We need to love our neighbours in word as well as in deed. It's a both and. It's not an either or. So you might like to say, even this week, you might like to say, come and see the new hall at the back of church. Why not? You might like to say, when the bishop's coming to open it on the 16th of June, you might like to say to your friends and family, your neighbours and colleagues, come and be with us when the bishop's coming. It's probably the last time she'll be in Hungerford before she retires. Come and see. It might be you'd like to say, come and see at harvest or remembrance or Christmas or Easter. Come and see. That's one of the primary ways in which we speak about the things of God. And I also want to say to us today, don't hide your light under a bowl. You know, the truth is that you have given £711,000. Talk about it. Don't hide your light under bowl. That's what Jesus says. What it actually says in our passage, let your light shine before others so they see your good deeds and glorify your Father 
who's in heaven. So come and see the building. Talk about it. Among your friends and family, with your neighbours and colleagues, talk about it. So that when they see your good deeds, your generosity, they'll glorify your Father who is in heaven. Ephesians says this, God has done immeasurably more than all we asked or imagined. To him be glory in the church and throughout all generations. That feels quite appropriate for today. And I've got one last thing I want to say to you. I want to say that we are the message. If you like, let's be the message. The Sermon on the Mount begins with the B attitudes. It's all about who we are. The salt is about who we are. Let's be the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the message. It sort of feels like you should have a t-shirt with it on, really. <laughs> you know, let's be the message, or be, just simply be the message. You could wear it on a t-shirt, wouldn't it? Alison and I had quite a good example of this earlier this year. We went to a conference in Harrogate, and the whole hotel in which we were staying, everyone was on this same conference. It's called New Wine Leaders. When we went to check out, the owner of the place says, it's been a lovely week. You've been such a lovely group. Everyone says thank you, and you're cheerful all the time. So we booked for next year, and we got free breakfasts. (laughs) But wouldn't it be great if the church was always known for being able to say thank you and being cheerful all the time? Let's be the message. You are the message. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for these scriptures. And we pray, Lord, that you would change us so that we are more Christ-like. And in our more Christ-like manner, may we be full of love and joy and peace and patience all the time, dealing with everyone. So as we walk around Hungerford, as we have conversations with people, people will see It's another one of those people down at the church. Lord, may we be known as people full of love and joy, peace and patience all the time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. So let's... um, Say before God and encourage one another as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So now do sit or kneel to pray as Carol comes to lead us in our prayers.
this isn't too long. Um, anyway, here we go. Um, Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, thank you that you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. At this time after Easter, we thank you that although it seemed like the end when Jesus died, there was a new beginning when he rose again, and now your spirit can live in us. When we think of the world, we think of the conflicts going on in many countries, especially the turmoil in Gaza and Israel, and the instability of the situation with recent involvement with Iran. May those who, who are set on violence have new hearts for peace and forgiveness. We pray for those who suffer there through injury, loss, loss of loved ones, for those who go hungry and without shelter. Please help the aid organizations such as Tear Fund who work hard to get through to give assistance and relief where the need is greatest. We pray for Ukraine that peace will come soon. We think of the families who are split up and the elderly who are left behind and are caught up in the constant shellings and often in great danger for their lives. Thank you for volunteers who risk their own lives in helping others. Help us to be mindful of those in other conflicts, as in the Yemen the civil war there, and in Sudan. We remember those in distress through flooding in Dubai and Pakistan, and the volcano eruptions in Indonesia. May there be collective action against climate change that all may work together for good. <clears throat> in our country, we pray for those in authority, for the government, that they will make wise decisions. We pray especially for King Charles and the Princess of Wales. Please be with them and all who go through such difficult treatments. Please draw close to each one so they may feel your presence at this time. We also pray for Stephen and Olivia, our bishops, and for all our spiritual leaders. Thank you for Mike and Ali, and for Marcia, Mike, and John, who help us in our Christian lives. We pray that Christians here at St. Lawrence may play our active part in the community, and at the same time to encourage all we meet to come to a personal saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We think of those who struggle in mind. May we listen, try to understand and empathize, to be compassionate when life is so difficult. We pray for the homeless and the hungry. Thank you for the provision of food banks. We pray for a world of greater equality and may those who need help to feed, to keep their families fed, come without shame for the food they need. We pray for students and young people. Please give them the clarity and focus in their studies to do their best as they journey on towards exams and the future. Please be with all those experiencing sickness, loneliness, and suffering everywhere. And for those in Hungerford, we remember Nicola Allen, Barbara Barr, Christine Cumley, Freddie Lofthouse, Susanna McConnell, Margaret Parker, Francis Pierce, Margaret Pembridge, Kathleen Walker, and Christopher Lee. We remember the families of those who passed away at this time of year. We could take a few minutes now to remember those on our minds. We pray all this in Jesus' dear name. Amen. Thank you, Carol. So let's stand for the peace.
the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were glad. Then... The, no. <laughs> they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And let's offer one another a sign of peace. Okay, shall we let people carry on with a piece if they want to, and we'll start singing. So the next hymn is the collection hymn, and it's number 579, Restore, O Lord. bottom of page six, we say together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Now let's sit or kneel to pray. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks to God and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
So at the bottom of page nine, we join together as we say, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. I can't be quicker than that, Paul. <laughs> so, hopefully, my can get to appear beside me. Good luck. So, here we go. Thank you, Mike. Oh, Actually, let's give Mike a round of applause. No one notices he's leapt into the breeze today. Let's round of applause for Mike upstairs. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So, this evening, uh, we're having a, uh, an hour of prayer at uh, 4 o'clock. You're very, very welcome to join us. Uh, I'll be here, Martin will be here. Do come and join us. Um, and you can come and go and let us stay as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, um, Romans, we're looking at Romans. Uh, so, this week is all about sin. It's probably miserable. Please go along for home and uh, we'll learn all about sin. See if you didn't know already. Next Saturday, uh, we're going to open the game at Andrew Gilmore's home, uh, where his garden is. Uh, if you haven't been before, it's a brilliant garden. It's a sort of a, a Chinese section and a Japanese section. And there's um, a lovely um, vegetable patch and, and a meadow uh, full of cowslips. And what he said this year is particularly important are the bluebells. If you haven't seen his bluebells, go to Sanham Green and you can see his bluebells. Alice and I are going to do a barbecue at lunch. I think, Martin, you're doing a plant store, is that right? Do come and we'd love to see you there. Um, on Thursday... The 2nd of May, uh, so don't get it right, it's not next week, um, we're going to be um, helping the, the Canal River Trust. They don't know where yet, so we don't know where we're meeting. It's a bit confusing, but hopefully it'll all work, I'm sure it will. And then Charlie. Charlie said Charlie wants to come up the front. Here she is. At the double. Very impressive. Did you join the so, running club? Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly, encourage everyone to come to our family service in May. It's for a whole church family, so if you're young, if you're old, if you're in between, very welcome. I've got three asks for our first service in May. One, come along, invite other people along. Two, I'd love some people to make some plain fairy cakes so we can decorate them in the service. And three, this is for everybody, not just the children, I'd like everybody to bring along a soft toy, a favourite teddy bear or soft toy, please. That's it from me. I'm going to bring Tigger. So you can bring Tigger too, but I'm going to bring Tigger. A bit further ahead, a bit further ahead, um, Pentecost. So Pentecost, there'll be a normal morning service, but in the evening we're going to have sort of like nine lessons and carols for Pentecost uh, with churches together. And further ahead, still the 16th of June, please come, put this date in your diary. Uh, Bishop Olivia is coming to officially open the new building. We're hoping to have it all straight by then, okay? Don't expect it to all be straight by next week. Please pray for George and Sandra, who are leading the process. They need all the help they can get. And I think that's the notices. What have I forgot? Last hymn, okay. What is the last hymn? Who else? Should we sing number 1072, In Christ Alone? You get a special bonus, George. <laughs> Cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, fears are still, though striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who took on flesh, for of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save.
fail on the cross as Jesus died. Cross of God satisfied. Every sin on him was laid. In the death of Christ I live. And in the ground his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, fought with the precious blood of Christ. Guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man, ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. Me home here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. As we stand, let's pray. May the peace of God, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd from the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. So to collect your tea and coffee... You want to go through a small door that's over there. The, the counter will be on your right-hand side. Go round to the left hands, and you'll find milk and biscuits and things. Keep going round and come back into the body of the church. Otherwise, we'll get a traffic jam. Thank you very much for joining us. The uh, annual meeting starts in 15 minutes.